Let's go. We got you. Gosh. Boom. Dude, appreciate you hopping on. Yeah, no doubt. You got the art in the background. Just chilling. I, I was like, man, I want to be chilling. I want to be kicked back. No doubt, dude. Um, yeah, so we're we're, ro we're rolling already. But um, yeah, if you want to cut anything at the end, anything we touch on, you don't want to talk about, just let me know. Like All it's right. it's not gonna get pumped out for like six weeks or so. Okay, bet. So let's ride. All right, everybody. We got Eric Kendricks on today. Just a savage from Minneapolis, out of uh, LA currently. That's where you're at right now. Yeah, that's where I'm at right now. Originally from Fresno, California. Yeah. So about uh, four hours, three and a half hours uh, north. Oh, I get you. So, so uh, when we're when we're at your spot overlooking the valley, so that's not you weren't from down in the valley like that. No, I'm like from beyond, like way beyond. Oh, yeah. beyond the hills. All right. I, I misheard that when I was out there. I was like, oh, like it, was, it was towards <laughs> that, but it was just like, that, uh, yeah, it's kind of facing my home. The, so. the, eso, the esoteric right there. I'm from right down there. I'm now I'm looking down. <laughs> no, uh, but dude, no, I just like, uh, dude, you're one of my favorite people to play with. Uh, you have a crazy passion for the game. And then like, you're just like curious, you got the art in the background, you're a good human. But uh, I just want to know, like, where in your life are you like chasing edges? Where are you pushing the boundaries? Where are you learning? Where are you curious? What's the first thing that comes to mind? Man, I don't know. You know, I feel like I don't, I don't do anything I'm really not interested in. And if there's something that's really not interesting to me at the time, then I'm, you know, I may, I may hear it out, but I'm not going to really go into it. But, you know, things about your body, you know, especially when people are usually smarter than me, I usually tune into or, you know, um, just different ways of thinking, you know, uh, like, you know, uh, I'm open to therapy. I'm open to, you know, just like psychological, you know. Uh, nice. Do you, go, do you go to therapy? I do. All right, hell yeah. I, I just started going back in March. Oh, bet. Cool. Yeah, how do you like it? I, I like it a lot. It just, I mean, it makes you think. And it just, like, it's just questions. It's unbiased. And it's just, like, it's a cool little mirror for yourself. Exactly. That's what it, it's just, like, a, it's like, a, it's like a structure for something that you really don't know what to structure for, essentially. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like a business con consult for your brain. Yeah, I've been going, I've been, I've been going for, like, three years now. And, I, you know, I feel like... Uh, it's been great for me. It's been great. Love it. Yeah. I was just like, obviously like football has been in crazy limbo for me. So like, and then like I had this breakup, I didn't know where I want, like, again, the same thing, like I don't like to not go all in on something. And so like the limbo was just in the no structure was killing me. So I started those like 4am workouts and then I, I dabbled at therapy and now I, I stick with it. I, I hit it once a month, but yeah, it's, it's a dude, it's a great tool. And um, do, do, do you think it's weird, um, like in football, like we don't like the sports psychologist isn't really around like mental skills isn't something they really push on us in, in football. Hey, no, not really. You know, uh, the Vikings actually have been really good with it the past couple of years, for sure. What, what, what do they got going there? They have, a bunch, they have a bunch of more resources coming. And, you know, as far as just people, I could, I could just not even the resources that we have, which are, you know, compared to other teams, I feel like are really good. Uh just like the conversations I've fallen into on the sidelines and stuff like that with some of the guys on the team, like that's been like the, the best thing for me. Like, you know, you never know what some guys may be going through. And then all of a sudden, you know, you, 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 you know, it's a, maybe like, you know, a Friday practice, you know, everything's kind of slowed down a little bit. You have a little bit extra time while special teams are going and you find yourself in a conversation like, damn, like I didn't know that about this person, but it's pretty cool. Yeah. The boy, the boys get deep. Uh, but so like, uh, is like the sport do you have like a sports psychologist with the Vikings that like guys work with or is like because like we like with the the mind strong stuff we like we're kind of in the mental skills realm and like baseball is massive mental skills visualization goal setting fear setting all this stuff but like and he, when I was with the Texans like the sports psychologist would like try and sit at the table and like guys would like get up and be out and that kind of deal yeah I mean I wanted to say it's necessarily a sports psychologist, more of a, just a psychologist. Like it's not really, it's not um, aimed toward, I mean, it could be aimed towards whatever you want personally. I feel, I feel like that's the best part about it, but it's mainly just kind of like, uh, if you want to talk about stuff besides sports, you know? Yeah, no, I guess I'm doing a shit job asking questions because <laughs> yeah, like obviously like ther therapy is like the, like the, the doctor side of it, but 
I just I'm I'm just intrigued at why like mental skills isn't massive part of football because it's such a massive part of the game. Like and like obviously like you can speak on it where like you've developed mentally since you've gotten into the NFL too with like your comfort level and that kind of stuff where like you've learned kind of like your own process on handling like your mental capability and your mental preparation. Oh yeah, definitely. I feel like when I got to the, you know, when I got there, even when I was young and I've always been really spastic and like super energetic. It's never been my, my issue. Um, it's kind of been just like me learning as, as, as fast as I can and processing the information, like you said, but I feel like on the field has never really been my, like, every time I'm on the field, it's kind of been my safe haven. You know what I mean? Like I've always understood that that's my space to be completely unique and kind of like dr drop everything else behind. So, you know, I've actually like been good at, at that, that, that part of the football thing. And, you know, um, it's about everything off the field that I, you know, but that, but that stuff off the field could have ended up affecting you on the field, you know, without you really knowing. Um, and I feel like that, but you know, everybody's different though. You know what I mean? Everybody's different, but I recognized that really soon. And that was like, okay, that's what I kind of, I, I use that as my outlet essentially. And yeah, I, that, that, that's I really your know. art. That's, that's yeah. your art you're creating. That's a, you're, you're a duck on water. It's, it, but, but, but I didn't really realize that probably at first, like I, like I do now. So now it just makes it that much more special, essentially, you know? Yeah, no doubt you're doing what you're kind of made to do. What, uh, what, uh, what, what does your shirt say? Live dudes? Live, live dudes. <laughs> English language, man. Li uh, live, live, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Carry the two, the same thing. Now, this is uh, the Bustin' with the Boys podcast. This is one of their shirts. Okay. Like, uh, you ever see Big Daddy when um, the dude comes in? Like, he the kid's like, I'm scared of the dark. And he, the guy comes in and brings, like, the live nudes, like the arrow for, like, a strip club. Okay, okay. Anyway, okay. That's where Is they got it. Off of that? I got you. Yeah, no, they're, 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 their stuff's hilarious. Have you ever checked out their podcast or anything? I haven't. I, I've seen little clips on, on the internet, but I haven't really uh, I haven't really watched the full full one. Yeah, dude, they're, they're linked with, like, Barstool. They got a good thing going. Will and Taylor, are, they're – they're funny ass humans. <laughs> They're good. But um, dude, so anyways, back to like the on the field stuff. So for those of you listening, me and uh, EK were rookies together. I was a 26 year old rookie with the kid. <laughs> um, so like it was cool to see, like, obviously we were going through the same process. We're like staying after to learn the plays and all that kind of thing. Um, but I, you picked it up a little better than the boy. Um, like you, like you're rolling. It was cool to see like your learning process and like, like, how hard you were on yourself to like again get things right because like they put you they threw you in the fire quick hey yeah definitely you know I I really wouldn't prefer any other way essentially but um I really do think that you know at UCLA they kind of prepared us really well it, it was a very similar like installs um kind of the way we installed at UCLA was very similar to how we installed with the Vikings and a lot of our plays were very similar as well I just had it was just the, the verbiage that was the hardest part for me that's probably what was so frustrating to me at the time. It was like, I know what I'm supposed to do, but I just can't say the correct things, you know? <laughs> uh, it was just funny to hear Zim give you a hard time with that kind of stuff too. But I mean, like, that, that's also crazy, like, where we're going off the center point. Like, uh, like that, that was a new adjustment for was, me. Too. That was new too for me. I was definitely new. Um, I remember Anthony was telling me about it. I, I had an advantage, you know? Anthony was, I remember he was telling me about it when I was in college. He's like, bro, like, you won't believe this, like, we have this blitz that, you know, this is what we do. And it's, it's like, you can, you can get it right every time or, you, you know, like, and I was just like, what? But then when I, you know, obviously when I started playing, I, I understood what he was talking about. Yeah. And he's referring to like the, the center of the quarterback points to like the strength of where the offensive line is going to block. So like, if they point one way, you can go the other way. It's kind of like a chess game that some people that don't know football might not notice, but like, so after I like, so after I left Minneapolis with y'all, like going down to Houston and like, I'm like, why is everybody not doing Zim's like point and like again guaranteeing the odds and like kind of trying to beat the the house for in essence? But dude, dude there's not a lot of people that play that game just because some of the miscommunication that come can come out of it. No, no doubt, and it's crazy because uh, like the game is the like for us the game has like evolved so much deeper than that from that that year because obviously people catch on. You know, it is the NFL, but like it gets deep now. Like we have to like figuring it out is not as easy as it used to be. So um, it's fun though. It's a challenge. You know what I mean? We, we got to do it every week, you know? Uh, so it's cool, man.
Yeah, dude. I, there was one time where I went back and forth like five times with you and AB in there one time. I was dying. Man, it's crazy. I've been playing. This is like this is seven for you. This is this is year seven for me. Uh, this is year eight. This is year I don't know. This is year eight for AB. But we've been. I mean, we've been playing together. My look, we missed one year while he was in the NFL and I was in the college. But I mean, ten years. Shit, that's crazy. Yeah, that's unheard of. Eleven like, years. I don't yeah. even know. And then you, you're still under contract for you said three, yeah. And then he's he's got to be under for another two at least still, right? I think he uh they, he I think he restructured some something. Or, uh, I think it's maybe one. I'm not sure though. Uh, I I guess, right. Yeah, I just, I just remember that whole Jets debacle with him like going there and then not going there. Yeah, he couldn't leave the boy. That was crazy. He couldn't leave the boy. Yeah, it was cool, man. It was cool, yeah. to, like. You know, you got to do, you got to follow your heart, you know? Dude, no doubt. And like, again, like you can, like people paint guys to be all about the money and all that kind of shit. But no, like the locker room in Minnesota is special, man. Like you guys got like a cool group. It started to dismantle a little bit from what I knew, what it, whatever that was six years ago. But that was probably, that was my most fun, most, like that was my favorite locker room to be in. Like guys were, again, they're having the, like the conversations like that were a little like, deeper than the average deal that I've been through and that kind of thing. So it was, it was a vibe there. No, it's cool, man. It's, it, shoot. The locker room is a sacred place, man. It's like, there really no, there's really no other way to like describe it really. You know, it's, it's just, it's a melting pot from everyone from around the United States, different backgrounds. You know, you can have someone whose parents is like an astronaut and you can have somebody who never, you know, didn't have any parents. It's crazy. It's like the exact, it's like, opposite ends of the spectrum like everybody's together everyone has to do the same job work for you know one goal it's a beautiful thing yeah no, like there's no other place where like 11 guys got to be on the same page coming from different schools different education backgrounds all that shit I think it's super dope too it makes it makes like a, it makes for like a cool um I guess conversation like when like even like when all the the social justice stuff was going down in Minneapolis which you were involved in too mm -hmm. um people like for randomly people were asking me like my experience in the locker room like like how do you have these conversations I'm like it's not a, it's not even fucking like that like it's just like it's the boys talking to the boys it, you gotta I mean it's that's what I'm saying like you 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 know that everyone's from a different background you know everyone has different um experiences different you know different things that they were you know everyone was raised differently to where they have different beliefs you know what I mean and it's and you talk through you know what you believe in and it you hear you you, you actually listen to people with what they say and, you know you, you, god you, forbid you listen to what people say you respect their their opinion you know it's like you know it's you could disagree with them all day you know that's it's, it happens but yeah. that, that, that's that's, that's why i like the podcast game though like you start just like when like because uh you said who who's podcaster on the other day you said cassius Oh no, I was uh on with Sean Merriman on his podcast. Oh, bet. Yeah, like but like you start to like and that's why I think the bus with the boys did a great job because they they kind of they're a little more like full blown locker room talk, like talking about cutting their dicks off for Super Bowls and stuff like that. But um, but like you start to see like the other side, like not the formatted side that they give you in the media where you're like, Yeah, we gave it our all today, but it didn't work out, or like that kind of stuff. No, you, you see guys telling their story, you see guys talking about like how a deal went wrong or whatever the, whatever the hell it's, I, I think that's the coolest thing about the podcast game. You start to see some of these locker room conversations we've had. Yeah. You just, you just relax, you know, you're chopping it up. You know, I, I how many conversations we had, you know, so it's just like, yeah. this is like, this is another one we're having, you know? Yeah, dude. I mean, well, we've been on the, the chasing edges kick. We've been talking straight, like Brett, like me, me and EK have been texting about red lights for a couple of weeks now, all that kind of stuff. But like, but like, that's where, I mean, in my eyes, like all that stuff stacks up. And dude, if say all those little edges over these last couple of years equal another year for you, that's five, six million dollars. No, no doubt. And it's like, and at the same time, like there's no information. There's really no information on like the entire, like if I have any type of information in the world, like chances are it, it's going to help me. I'll share that information with anybody else because as long as I'm handling my business, like me helping you, get an edge yourself, it's not going to affect me getting my edge. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm going to, you know, as long as I'm handling my business, I'll have success in my realm. So me, me share, you know, sharing, like I, I do Pilates, you know, I tell everybody I can, like 
man, you should do Pilates. Like, it's amazing for me. It's amazing for the, this reason, this reason, this reason. Like, so many people I love, love that, I, you know, I, I play with or, you know, on our different teams who I know in, in the LA area have, like, been, we all been going to the same Pilates instructor now. Like, and I, I like to think that I, you know, I enc encourage them to do that. But, like, I, I love to see them getting better in that way. And I would never just, like, try to, like, yeah. hide that type of information from them when I know it can help them. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, that, and honestly, that, that's a dope form of leadership. And, and like my eyes, like as long as you're on your path and like you're doing great things on your path, why would you not like share? And like, why would you, and especially like guys in your own locker room, why would you not give everybody everything? And then like, even like, like information, like, so it's weird in the NFL because like, yeah, like, so, but like, so they, they draft a guy to come in and take your spot and that kind of stuff. That's where like, I see it get a lot, like with special teams, I was always like, dude, everybody get in here. I'll teach you everything I know. And, I, and eventually I probably coached a kid that took my spot, but um, but like, yeah, dude, that make, that only makes sense to me because again, like if you're taking care of your business, like the cards are going to fall where they need to. No doubt. And I mean, that's how Chad, Chad was with me when I, you know, when I first got there, Chad was the same way, you know, he didn't like try to hide anything from me or like act a certain way when I was a rookie, you know, he was just like, this is what you need to know. This is, you know, this is what's some bullshit. This is not some bullshit. You know, this is yeah. what you got. To do. And it was, you know, I was like, I was like, damn, that's cool as hell. Like, yeah, dude, I was I was having this conversation the other day where this guy just like he goes, there, there's two there's two ways to have uh there's two ways to have the tallest building in a city. Like you can build your building taller or you can tear everybody else down or like suck them dry kind of deal. And I was like, damn, like let's get like I'm I'm going up. Yeah, no doubt. It's it's crazy. Like it's it's true though. Yeah, you don't gotta starve everybody else. Um besides that honestly I gotta get my Pilates game up now. You <laughs> after the hype. It's amazing. So I've done it twice. I did it once on a reformer and one off of a reformer. I thought the reformer was tight. Um, but the other one I went to is like a ground Pilates or whatever. And like, I was, I was sweating my ass off and I had like these two grandmas next to me talking the whole time. And I like, I'm, <laughs> this is before I picked up the breathing stuff. I'm huffing and puffing. And I was like, all right, this ain't, this ain't my jam. But like, um, what, what, so what do you think the best benefits of that are? Um, I would say like your, your, obviously your core strength but i'm talking about like your adductors i'm talking about like your your it bands i'm talking about like your just me like me being able to set my my like use my shoulder without like getting into my traps you know what i mean yeah, use yeah, my yeah. shoulder with my with it set down my back like just small little details like that i feel like are just the edge you look you know, you're talking yeah. about edges, you know what i mean yeah but i mean um, that's that's that and then on top of that like if you think it works for you too you got the placebo too where like Again, like you just create your own armor, how you create it. But for me, the the real reason why it works is because that uh, after the games, you, I'm super sore. Obviously, I play linebacker. Like, yeah, the we have a game on Sunday. Monday, I'm super sore, but I I usually get a little workout in. But Tuesday is usually when I can't move. Like I'm like really really yeah. stiff. I get my you know I usually have a massage somewhere in there, acupuncture, chiropractor, all that. But on that Tuesday, I started incorporating like a, a Pilates workout. And sometimes oh. I walk in there and I'm like, I can't even really move. But just me to start just getting the body restarted, like getting my, my hips rolled around how I should be, just getting my muscles starting to engage how I should be, that sets me off so much better for the start of the week, like mm. all day. And that's what I like, I, I enjoyed it the most. Yeah, that's actually, that's actually super cool when, cause like, like I'd usually, I'd like, li I'd like knock my leg lift out on Monday. And like, that would be part of like my, my flush or that variant of that. But like a lot of guys in the NFL take their Tuesday off. Like they, like some guys don't do shit. Other guys take care of their body. They'll hit their acupuncture or IVs or whatever guys are doing and that kind of stuff. But like, I mean, I just think that's insightful for like linebackers in general, going through 25 car wrecks a game to be able to go back, go back out and roll. So like, but so Wednesday's your hard practice. Like, do you have it like any, like you have like the sore abs and that kind of stuff or you're kind of conditioned for it? No, it's not, it's not really like, a, it's not really like, like it, right now I'll do more of like really like intense Pilates training, but like during the season, you know, I may have a, I may have a Tuesday where let's say, you know, we were up by 30 points, hopefully, you know what I mean? And yeah. We were just playing third downs, and I wasn't, yeah, <laughs> and I wasn't, and I wasn't banging as much. You know what I mean? I may be able to, able to do a little bit more on that Tuesday, but if we have a game where we're playing, you know, the Titans, and we're, I'm hitting Derrick Henry every play. You know, I may have to come back in, and I may have to do, you know, an hour worth of work, but we're doing much different work in that hour. You know, we're doing way more, way more relaxed, way more, you know. Um, just so you got, 
Yeah, you kind of got like gears to it. Definitely. All right, noted. Yeah, that's that's a yeah. I was I was stupid sore from my two experiences too, and so like that's I'm I'm again I, that's something I don't know anything about. So I'm gonna listen to you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hear you out. Um, but so what what so you vibe with the acupuncture too, hey? I do definitely. Yeah, I so like I've gotten like the traditional variants of the acupuncture, but we had this incredible. Does has Doctor Casey Hill ever came up there and worked on any guys? Not me. Uh, yeah. he, he travels around a decent amount, but he like he dry needles like your meridians, like so he goes ham on certain parts of the body along the meridian. It's really cool. But I was just I was intrigued. But so the, like, will you do that once a week in season? I'll do it twice a week usually. Yeah, one, one uh, usually on Friday and on Monday or Tuesday. All right, cool. Yeah, because it kind of has like a window of how much it works or like the window it works for. And then like you go through your car wrecks and you got to do it again anyways. Yeah. Same with the chiropractic and all that kind of stuff. Um, as far like so, I mean, we've obviously talked some subs and that kind of thing, but um, that's that you're not doing anything like are you doing IVs, uh, any crazy subs, anything like that that kind of give you an edge? Now I'm just doing my fish oils, vitamin D. Mm. You know I the mean, drill. protein shake after the workout, you know, with, with the, you know, with some greens in there and stuff like that, but nothing crazy. How, how's your, uh, the mental side of your game changed since you've been in the league, since we played together? Um, it's definitely slowed down for sure. The game has slowed down for me. Um, the game is always changing though. It yeah. is cool to see. It's cool to see like each year, okay, one year they did this. Okay, this year it was all about the flash. This this next year, you know, they want to get the running back the ball out of the backfield. You know, it's always it always changes, but uh yeah, you know, I just start I, I feel like I just know so much more at this point in my career. I have so many snaps under my belt and I trust myself like to the max. Like, and it's cool, and it's cool to feel that. Like obviously, you know, I you we we have a we have a certain scheme that we're we're coached and then it it is drawn up a certain way to the you know the formation that we're lined up against and obviously I do my job but like those moments where I know what I'm doing and it's like my instinct takes over that's like the that's like the best thing like I don't really have to think about like oh uh, should I should I should I you know yeah can I it's just like see ya yeah go <laughs> yeah you're I mean you play I mean you play fast as hell you're instinctive as hell too so like that that shows up but um dude it shows up that you love the fucking game too like you're out there like, I that a lot a lot of people and I, I'm happy that it's like how you feel because I really be having a ball out there like most of the time you know yeah. uh, just say, out know, there. But, you know, it's not as fun when you're, you're losing but you know uh yeah man it's still a great time for me I I People always ask me, like, man, like, how many years are you going to play? And I'm just like, I'm having a great time, like. <laughs> Till the party stops, man. <laughs> like, yeah. it's, it's, it's cool. So that's that's where I'm at right now with it, for sure. It's fun. So, so like, what, kind of what's your routine, like, leading up to the game? And, like, how do you kind of get into that state on the field? Or is it just you um, step on and you got it? Um, No, no, no. It's not. It's. I mean, I have a routine for sure. You know, obviously, during the week, we, 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 watch, we watch film, you know massages, things like that. Everything is very timed out depending on what day we play. Um, but I would say around, you know, I was, I would say around, is it Friday or Saturday? Friday, Friday we come in, you know, we have the short practice, we, we go home, we, you know, once we, once we pass Friday and I, you know, after we watch film, we come back the next day and watch film that Saturday, like I'm ready to play. Like, my mind, like, I'm good. Like, I yeah. need my own time. I want to laugh around. I want to, you know, I want to hang out with my friends in the hotel or, like, you know, my teammates in the hotel. I like to relax a little bit before I know I have that game on Sunday. You know, obviously, I know what I got to do in my mind, you know, I, and I know how to turn it on in the morning. But, like, you know those, you know those, those meetings the night before the game? Like, those things give me so much, like, anxiety, like <laughs> – let me go to my get. Let me get my snack. Like, like at, by that time of the game, like I, well, I'm like I'm ready to play. Like I'm ready to play. Like obviously we it's it's a check in before we have our you know it's a check in before the final test. 
it's, 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 it's over coaching for the guys that don't have that same feeling. I, like, trust me, like I get the meeting, but I hate the meeting. You know what I mean? It's like, it's yeah. like, it's like, because it, it, at that point, I'm ready to fucking go. Like, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm locked in. Like, and yeah. as soon as that fucking, as soon as I wake up in the morning, like my piss is hot. Like, I'm fucking excited. Like, and I'm ready to go every time. And it's, and it's like, I sleep good that night, you know. And I, it's like, when I wake up, is is go time. Yeah, but I hate the night games too. Sunday night, you know what I mean. Monday night, I usually have to wait all day, and I'm a little bit jittery all day. But the day yeah. games, twelve o'clock, perfect. Yeah, dude, those night games are crazy. They're trash because I mean, we like I don't know if people know, but you like five hours to your set. You'll try and have like a move around in the morning, and then like you're you're chilling. Yeah, like I remember early in my career, it was like I would just be in the hotel sitting around, like waiting for the night game. And the first quarter or something, my legs would be so heavy. Or like, you know, when I'm out there warming up, I'll be huffing and puffing. So now I just like get a quick little dynamic warm up in like halfway through the day. Like, yeah. you know, maybe it's, like it's that energy it's that it's that energy conservation, dude. You gotta breathe less. Yeah. <laughs> but now I but I but I I actually do like a little I actually like do some high knees in the hotel <laughs> just to keep my, you know. With just your hands just with your hands just like that, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, no, like I was, I was thinking, like you, you remember the who was it? It was a Fury Wilder fight when like Wilder was pacing the whole time and uh, Fury was just chilling. Did you yeah. catch that fight? Nope, that's me pacing. Though. I'm a pacer. Yeah. So like, but like, and then like, so I think they're fighting again for the third time, and he's like. It, it, and then he wore like a 60 pound vest into the fight too. said my, my legs were cash from having to carry that. And then I walked around all day, but like, but again, it's like, people don't think like that. And then, um, but like, that's the, the concept you're, you're touching on. And then even like, uh, like special teams, I always kind of preach to guys that like, if you're a teamer and like, you're just walking around on the sideline the whole time, like you're wasting miles. So like, I tried to get all like the younger guys to sit down and, yeah, chill, do their thing so that when it is time to roll, like you don't got, you're not already burnt out. No, nah, it's a, it's it's a it's a fine line because I feel like if you if I stay too stagnant, then I'm like lethargic. Yeah, you know? or maybe that's just maybe that's just me mentally. Nah, dude, I I think, dude, um, like you're intuitive as fuck. Like you're like like once you know what, like what feels right and feels good, and you like you've been like you've got seven years of it under your belt now where you know like you've kind of felt it out because i'm sure you, you've been in the games now where your legs feel heavy in the first quarter and you start solving problems yeah exactly yeah what I did do, i do I, I am a pacer before the game like crazy crazy pacer like i try to get it i try to get it all out though because like i said i'm i'm, I'm wired hot you know what i mean so like i try to get it out and, I, and as soon as i sit down i'm able to take those deep breaths yeah okay okay i'm, I'm calm now I got yeah. it out of me, and then I'm ready to play usually. Yeah, then the duck's in water, and he's out there having a ball. <laughs> yeah. Hey, dude, that's a, that's a vibe. Like, again, like – drinking coffee right now, or is that tea? It's tea. It's tea. Actually, dude, your boy – Like, you drinking a coffee at what time? No, I had to – so, uh, I was about to do my 4 a.m. lift. So, I'm, I got back – I'm back on East Coast time now. Okay. So, your boy actually ripped the mouth tape off and came down and got, <laughs> got after it. Really? Yeah, well, well it's uh, it, there's like 12, 15 here, but like, uh, and I'll, I'll stay up this late if I'm not doing my 4 a.m., obviously. So, like, it's straight, but uh, yeah, so I'll, I got, I'll live with like Ebner and Born now. Like, okay. so I, I, I kind of got two groups that roll every day. Like, I go to this gym at 4 a.m., or if I don't hit the 4 a.m., I got guys that lift at my house at like 8 30, 9 o'clock. So, it works out. Yeah. Win win. Win win. Win win. <laughs> yeah, it's got, got studs everywhere. Good, good the training. Home, the home gym is crazy. It's great. Oh, to not to, your your setup stupid. Oh, uh, he's been a game changer for me. Oh, uh, he uh, EK's got field turf. He's got the full rack, all the weights, the pull up bar everywhere, and it's again like with a beautiful view. in uh, is that the Hollywood Hills? Where what is that? No, oh, that's the uh, Ma Mal it's, Val it's Valley. I call it the Valley. He's know. in the Valley. The boys in the Valley. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um. Is, is there anything that you have to have in the gym that like you like your go-to thing like or like even like recovery stuff are you like a norma tech guy and all that stuff you had to have that at the house oh um yeah i i got this new um this new uh i think it's by hypervolt it's called uh 
Oh, you just busted out. Yeah, I, I thought I, I thought it was literally right here charging. Usually is, but um, it, it, it vibrates and it like uh, heats up, and that's okay. been the game changer. Like I put it around my calf. You can put it on like whatever they have it for your shoulder, and I usually just throw that on like when I know I'm about to work out for like ten minutes. Yeah, stretch it out, and it's I'm good. That's yeah. my go-to for sure. What was the calf your first injury in uh, pro ball? Um, nah. <laughs> no, I'm, not, I'm, I'm saying like injury that kept you out of a game. Yeah, a lot of games. Yeah, for sure. Like a significant amount. More Did than three. You, yes, I don't remember you being out anytime I was playing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've been, I was like, I may have missed like one or two games here and there, but yeah, yeah. that was the most I've ever missed. The kid takes care of his body. <laughs> Try to, man, for sure. Got to. Yeah, but uh, – Another so another thing I wanted to touch on just because because I dabble in the world as well. Um, you got you got a creative side too. The boy paints. Oh yeah, right. I painted that thing right here. Oh you. I always, I, I always use this as my like background when I'm doing like you know zooms or whatever. Yeah. But I painted that one right there. Not this one, but that one. Yeah. <laughs> that the other one, uh, is that like ceramic? The other one. No, let me let me. Oh, it is. A, it is a pain. I got you. It's like it's like a it's like a uh, it's like a print. I got you. It's a, it's in a nice little uh, little case. When did you get into painting? Shoot, I got back into painting. I think about three years, three seasons ago now. It was one off season. I was with Eric Wilson, and I was like, man, like. I think I was just like, I'm trying to like, I'm trying to paint or I'm trying to do something creative. Like let's make collages or something. Cause I, I went to an art school growing up and we did art every day. We had, we like kindergarten through eighth grade. We had, we did some type of art every day, whether it was pottery, whether it was origami, whether it was like painting, watercolor, everything. Like it was, it was cool. And I didn't even really like, I didn't really notice that it was great for me. You know what I mean? It was, it was such a positive thing to do all the yeah. time growing up, but like, I always wanted to play sports. So I never really like, I don't know. I didn't put two to two together, but fast forward it. I'm in the league and I'm like with Eric and we're in the off season, we're lifting and stuff. And I'm like, man, like, like, why don't we just start making, like, we have all this time. Like, why don't we start making stuff? And then me and Eric Wilson, we, I got a bunch of, I got us some canvases and I got us a bunch of magazines and some glue and we just started like cutting stuff out and like we were up to like three in the morning like <laughs> we started probably at like seven in the afternoon like and we were just having a ball like and we did that we did that multiple times whether it was painting and then we started just doing it more frequently and then I started just incorporating that like anytime I had some free time and I just felt the urge to like put some paint on the canvas like I started doing it so I just kept doing it more and more and now I have more paints now i have some canvases around here and i got more tools now to do it yeah dude i see you auction off, auction off some of your pieces too which is super dope yeah I, I started just collecting i started getting all these pictures that i started painting and then i was like man i i feel like i could do something productive with this so that's what we started doing we started auctioning them off um to like food banks you know essentially to help food banks and whatever that person who bought it um whatever food bank they chose i would match the donation usually that's what happened Oh, and yeah, I just saw one uh, actually for Anthony's foundation, Raise the Bar Foundation, um, uh, like a couple of days ago. So it was oh, yeah. proud to that. Um, do you uh, like? I know you support that place in Minneapolis. Do you have your own foundation? I don't have my own foundation. I don't know. I, I I've kind of like uh, been trying to figure out what I want to do. Essentially, uh, I start. I think I'm starting to hone, hone in on what what exactly I want to do. Um, support I, support I our partners. programs. Okay. I love cars, so I was like, man, how could I, it's always easy for me to do things with cars. I feel like, so that's kind of like natural. So we'll yeah, see. Dude, uh, I, like, I don't, I don't know shit about cars, but like you got, you got a pretty car. <laughs> I got, I got, a, I got a, I got a dope ass car that I wanted like for a while now. So I'm, I'm blessed that I'm able to like afford it. For sure. Um, you are you racing and stuff, or like you just you just joy riding? Like, what are you doing? No, I, I just cruise around. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of beautiful beautiful roads out here, and I just kind of just sometimes just drive out early in the morning. You know, when the sun's rising, take you know, get out of the car, walk around, take some deep breaths. You know, uh, 
take, go, go, go out with a few friends, you know, who also have cars and we enjoy it. And then, um, but I have taken it to the track though. And, in, in, uh, in, uh, Palm Springs. Oh, hell yeah, dude. But like, but you so say you're kind of finding your own variants of meditation. Oh yeah, absolutely. No, no. It behind the wheel is like for sure all day. That's what I, I've noticed that since I was in high school. Like, I love that. It's, hmm. it, you know, you get to think, you get to think to yourself, no music, you know what I mean? Just no hear, the music. Sound, hear the sound of the car, you know what I mean? Hands on the, hands on the steering wheel. Beautiful. It's beautiful out here, you know, and I, and I, I take advantage of it. Dude, no music. I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever been in a car with no music. I don't do, uh, no, I mean, I listen to music in the car, but, uh, no, but... All my drives, I don't, I don't listen to music pregame. Oh, really? No. None at all. I don't. I don't have no headphones. I mean, I'll hear whatever they play in the stadium or whatever we're playing. Yeah. I don't ever put headphones in. I like hearing what's going on. I like. I like hearing people. I like hearing people with headphones rapping their their songs. You know what I mean? Or singing their songs. Are you, are you hearing Cordell singing Rascal Flats or something crazy? Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, uh, Everson was funny. Shamar was always funny. Oh, Everson's out of control. <laughs> He's the man. See, so yeah, I say who's like who, who's the who's the loudest rapper or singer that you hear? Uh, probably oh, Everson. For sure, Everson and Shamar. Those two. Yeah, they're in it, dude. That's I like that. I like being kind of one with the environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude, that's that. Yeah, that's you got some traction. Well, like if I throw so, the, if I throw some like some music on that's gonna get me pumped up, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna like. The, the, wanna, bo the body follows suit, dude. Yeah, for I, real. I want to just be like. Cause I tell you when I when I'm when I'm pregame I'm pacing usually and I'm like I'm really chill up until that point usually. Yeah, dude, I I, I like that a lot. And I, dude, I, I honestly like uh like we coach a little bit, but like the, it, obviously like the environment stresses you out and like so loud like so like if again so you're in a stadium for three hours where they're blaring loud music, people are screaming like mm -hmm. the it's equivalent enough, like man. yeah, what'd you say? It's enough, you know what I mean? Whatever, yeah, but all the stuff that's happening already in the stadium. Yeah, like imagine that same, like imagine you're in your car and that same volume's being played for three hours. That's gonna stress you the fuck out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like that's like that's a stressor. And yeah. I so that, oh, dude, I like it. That's a that's a vibe. Um, that's perfect. Um, but like, yeah, like, but intuitively, you found that again that works for you, and that's why. It, years of, of experience. Yeah, and I mean, but Everson on the other spectrum, he's out there. He's I'm out there. Hurt, you know what I mean. And that then that guy can play some damn football too. Exactly. Dude, so the <clears throat> what are you gonna do with cars with the organization? What's cooking? I don't know. Um I think uh I remember I, I, I just remember, you know, uh my I remember my mom always needing tires, you know what I mean? You know, there was times where she needed tires. I don't want to say she always needed them. Um and I remember my first my first financial aid check when I got to college. Like part of it actually went to pay for my mom's new tires. Mm. When I, when, you know what I mean? That's crazy to think about. You know what That's, I mean? Yeah, it's super tight. But it was like it. I'm like, man, if I could, you know, I think that it would be cool to do something with tires. So yeah, if you could solve but, that problem for somebody if, else, if, you know, giving them back. You know, I know in Minneapolis too. Like it's there's snow on the ground half the year, and it's like tire. If you don't have tires, you're sliding. Yeah, and that's dangerous as hell. So. I think that it would be cool to like figure something out with that. No doubt. Uh, so what, what all was like, 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 how was it like growing up? Like, what was your background? Like we, we've talked yeah. about it a little bit before, but shoot. I don't really no, know. No, no. Um, shoot. I have, I have seven kids. siblings. There's, I have, there's, there's seven of us. Um, I have, I have some, some half siblings obviously, but um, shoot, love them all the same. My older, my older brothers, uh, I have Chad and Terrence. Um, there's and then my sisters Lorena, um, Heather, and my older brother Michael, who plays in the league. And then my older, my younger sister Danielle. Um, yeah, shoot. I mean, that's a squad. Squad. We're all we're all we're all spread out a little bit. You know, um, most of us are in California, Fresno. Um, shoot. Is your brother posted up out there too? Yeah, I have I have two brothers that are that uh, live in Fresno. My brother Michael lives out yeah. here. Do you, do you guys? You guys, does he train with you? 
Uh, yeah, sometimes. Sometimes we're on different different schedules a little bit, but he goes to the same Pilates uh, instructor that I go to, um, and he and he works out for the most part. Uh, same people I work out with. Who do, who do you usually train with out there? I, I've seen you with a couple different crews over the years. Yeah, I go, I go uh, with uh, Jamal, JLT. It's cool. It's a place in Hollywood. He has good work. Um, so, so, but you've tried out some different gyms in the offseason and stuff up to this point now, haven't you? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've been, I've been working out with Jamal uh, for probably four or five years now. So it works. So, yeah. What, it's, I like it because it's not really, you know, what I like about it is we don't, we obviously touch the weight. We, 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 we lift weights, but it's more, it's more movement based. You know what I mean? It's more jumping, uh, you know, single leg type movement, um, explosives, and it's much more functional. It's much more of my type of like, um, what, like, how, like what, how you do your job on the field. It applies. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. The boy's a runner. The boy, the boy covers ground. Exactly. And, it, and it's never, it's like, it's, they're all circuit work. It's all exhaust. It's, it's conditioning. The lift is conditioning in itself. You know what I mean? And you guys run before you lift. Same concept. Yeah. Yeah. That's where like, I don't like looking back on my career and that kind of thing too. Like I spent a lot of time in the, like the training world and I did like a couple different deals, but like, like once you get to the league and like, you kind of like have your established strength and your skill set, like the, the absolute, like that, where you don't see, like you see in college, the guys squatting 700 pounds. All the time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, but you don't see that in the league. Mm-mm. Not at all. Like one, it's probably, it's not, yeah, it's not, it's not incredibly smart, but like, like once you get, like, once you find your, like, kind of, I guess your operation, like biomechanical angles where like you're comfortable and you know that you can get the job done with X amount of strength, you don't have to be the, the strongest every damn time. Exactly. And it honestly, like, it's more about, it's more about functionality too. So like, if I can, if I can move this, if I can, if I can bench press, you know, 265, eight times after I'm exa- being completely exhausted you know what i mean yeah it's a, it's a different type of 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 lift if i'm underneath benching 350 and i'm doing it for three reps and i'm completely like my heart rate is completely you know yeah chill calm yeah you know it's just it's just totally different yeah so that, that's where you see the functionality of what you guys do because mm-hmm. because in the game you're going to be exhausted and you're going to have to like you know you have to button press off somebody so yeah it really works yeah, dude, that's that's super. It's, it's a good way to look at it. Just because I've done, like, did I've I've trained with hockey guys. I've trained with bodybuilders at one point, and then like I trained with eight, like Adrian's the like Adrian's guy in Houston. What sounds more like your guy, where like he's a believer, and like so we we'd start the off season with this crazy volume, like stupid, like two mile Indian runs, like ten sets of or uh, ten reps of three tens was the worst day I remember like in in Houston and like in the kind of like OT like gearing up for OTAs which is still hot in Houston and and that kind of thing and then but like we get to the point where like we adjust to this high volume and then he hones us and he like kind of gets us into that like football realm but we have this foundation but anyways but like eventually like I learned that like I don't even need all that volume like like that was just putting miles on the tires and like I refined my system to where I got to all right like can you do all your jobs on the field can you flip your hips? Can you stick your foot in the ground? And then now like you start thinking about it, like force equals mass times acceleration. Like, okay, my size isn't changing. Like I can only, like while I'm running and playing on the football field, I can only really actually bench press X amount of weight anyways. So like I eventually filtered this process out where like I'm wasting my time here. I'm wasting my time with the power lifting while I'm playing. And then again, you get to the and that's why you have good coaches. That's why you find good trainers and stuff in the off season where eventually you get a very smart system where they, they let you be a football player. And do you, do you get it? Do you get like say in kind of some of your workouts too, or no? Oh, no. I mean, I think that, I think that especially being a pro, you know what I mean? You hundred percent have to have say in your own workouts because my, you know, we, we have D linemen on our team who have a totally different job than what I have. You know what I mean? Yeah. And if, and they might have to they might have to be under the bench and squat rack with more weight more frequently because that's what their position demands for. But also yeah. like if I have a certain injury, if I have a certain restriction, I have to be able to get my you know get 
an equal, equal or, or, you know, decent, same, same type of lift in, but do something that doesn't hurt me and do something that feels good on my body, period. Yes. Like, have definitely, to. definitely like a specialization thing where like, obviously like, like we're one of the only sports that also have X amount of sizes. Like we have the big dogs, the guys that do kind of both. And then you have like the skinny butts, the fast dudes and that kind of thing where it's just like, if we're doing any type of like workout on concrete or anything like that automatically. Like I'm already like, I can't really do it. I have to be on, I have to be on grass. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which is, which is smart. Cause like dude, a lot of young kids, they'll show up to a spot though, whether they're training on concrete or whatnot, but they'll like, they'll be doing the same thing. Like a DB is doing the same thing a D lineman's doing. And like some, like some guys just don't know any better. Like they're lifting with good players. So they assume it's good programming. And some of it, and some of it is like, depending on what you do, like, but the weight, you know, is never, is never, you know, it's never going to be the same. You know what I mean? And just specifically for you, if you feel like you need to do something else because it hurts you or, you know, you, it doesn't work for you, then if it's not working for you up here already before you're even lifting the weight and it's like, you got to figure something else out. Yeah, for sure. And then like, I've, I've had the conversation with a couple guys now at this point where like, um, like Nate Ebner is going on like year nine, 10, um, even like uh, Kush, all like all these guys like you get to the point where like, like hard work and effort and grit and like this crazy work capacity got you and kept you in the NFL for a while. But now you're to the point where like, like preservation. yeah, it's preservation. But like, it's also like, I had this standard for myself to like go hard in the paint and be the hardest worker and like that's that's what everybody knows me as all this kind of stuff but like flirting with that line of like what's enough now is it task completion do I just get the job done and be able to do my job like I talked to Will Compton about this the other day too where like it's just a it's a weird little line to flirt and like I mean definitely I know I I, I can feel that too I can feel that for sure uh it's like you said like you have to find what, and it, and it always is ever changing. Like, and you're dealing with your old self too, which is the hard part because you're like, man, I can't, I used to come in here and I used to bang out X amount of things, da, 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 da. but you know, I have, I might have three different seasons on my right shoulder, you know, versus that, 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 that previous year when I was doing that. So it's like, yeah, it's just wear and tear, you know, I gotta, you gotta be smart. Cause if you're not out there on the field, if you're injured, you know, yeah. because you were going too hard or, doing something stupid in the weight room where you maybe should have been being yeah. doing something different. Then it's like, then you're not winning. You're not helping anybody. You're not helping your team. You're not helping yourself. You just hurt. Yeah. Something, something's better than nothing for sure. Um, last, last thing, uh, just cause this sparks that cause like me and like me and Will Compton will exchange books and that kind of thing. Um, I, w- w- were we talking about the, like the stumbling upon happiness? Like you can't, compare yourself to other people you can't compare yourself to the person in the past you can't anticipate the future so all you got is like kind of the t- you get a you get a dinner plate man you got to eat off that plate right here you can't i can't be worried about you i can't be worried about your vegetables that you're not eating you know yeah. what i mean like, i i gotta eat my vegetables you know what i mean <laughs> like yeah but but like that's where like i think it's cool like just with the perspective i have now where like um because like i battled that a little bit too where like oh i'm not working at like like I, like I was doing like I, honestly I was overtraining back when I was like up in the CFL to the point where like like I plateaued on everything and I went to my doctor and he goes yeah your your test is at like 211 like everything is crazy like you have the DHEA levels of like an 83 year old woman like all this stuff and just burying me and then like so I learned like one like there's a limit to how much you can actually do but then like me working ex, like in my mind I worked x like I was a blue collar hustle whatever kind of guy and that got me into the league. So I had to keep doing that to keep it. And then, but like now with the, like what I've read and understand and felt now, like I like, that's a completely different human. <laughs> like, again, you don't have the reps on the field. You don't have the, the knowledge that I picked up from like you or AB or Harry, like any, like any guys I ever played with or the Cushes and the JJs of the world, that stuff too. This is just, a, it's a new fucking monster anyways. You, so like the same as you, I can't worry about my, your vegetables. I can't worry about the vegetables that were on my plate that I did or did not eat in the past. So mm-hmm. now it's just, dude, that's, I like, I like the plate analogy. I'm stealing that. And, and honestly, like, like you said, like, it's, it's always, it's always changing. Like you got to, and it, and it's not, it's not necessarily for the, for the worst. It's not like you may be lifting less weight or you may be doing less volume than you were doing at this point because you were, like you said, you were overtraining, but you feel like you were training crazy. Right. 
Yeah. But you're learning new ways to train. You know what I mean? Like I, you know, like I, I was mentioning Pilates. Like Pilates, like I don't do any. We don't lift any weights in Pilates. But as far as strength, as far as like how strong, I, how stable my body feels, I feel stronger than do yeah. after doing the Pilates workout than if I were to, you know, do max squat for sure any all day. Yeah. And it's like, and have you, oh, by the way, this is a side tangent. Have you ever done like straight kettlebell workouts? Yeah, for sure. That's that's like high like endurance like. Yeah, and then but like did like that kettlebell over and over and over. Yeah, and I think it, I think it's great for your back. I think it's great for like the core. I think it's phenomenal for the shoulders. And then like everything turns into grip too, which sleeps on you. <laughs> like it'll sleep, it'll catch up on you in the workout. I think they're I think they're phenomenal. Kettlebells is, is fire too. Like that's another way to like deload, but also. Yeah, for sure. I, I, you know, it's like you got to be open for you know you got to be open. For, if if someone suggests something to you, you know you got to be open to like hear them out, try it. Yeah, and, and you and you have you been like that? So like could, could whatever uh, year seven ek go back and tell rookie ek hey do Pilates and kettlebells and you to listen? Yeah, because at first I was like someone was like do yoga and I was like oh hell I'm down I'm down to do it and I was doing yoga and then it was like okay do this do that and I'm like I'm trying all these new things you know. If I don't like it, I don't like it. You know, I'm not gonna like do a do a bike workout because I've done, I've tried that and it's just yeah. like bike's not for me. <laughs> but like you know, once I once once I did Pilates, it was like oh done. Yeah. And 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 at some point you'll try something new too, and maybe it kicks. But like that's where like dude, like that's where I think like elite performers like like high level guys like competition like breeds this level of curiosity too, where like it's not like what are, what's everybody else doing it's like what else can i do on top of this or exchange like but it like some guys tie their identity to the routine and they become a slave to the routine and then like now like if they don't get acupuncture on friday they, their mind's not right for the game on sunday and like so now does the root like do you own the routine or does the routine own you i think that's a cool little dance where like like time and experience kind of no doubt no doubt but like you know like you were suggesting with that uh you know, with the underwater training, you know, you were, you were, you were just saying like the slope that I have in the pool, you know, it's like, yeah. I, I was curious, you know what I mean? I'm yeah, like, yeah. like, is there, is there parts of that that I can incorporate? Yeah. Yeah. Ali's going to send me some video of you just <laughs> doing jumping jacks or something crazy in the water. I, 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 uh, I was doing conditioning over these ladders today and I was like, Ali, come on, come on, come on, let's do the conditioning. And I made her do it with me. She Hell yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, she's in it. She, she's in it forever, dude. She's, She's solid though. She's an athlete. Yeah, she. I'm a. Uh, what What she do in college? She played something in college, didn't she? Oh yeah, she. Uh, she. She ran track and she played soccer. Are yeah, she's a, she's a dog. Yeah, she's a beast. Yeah. I, I was like, I remember one time we were at Dave and Buster's, and we were doing we were playing Papa Shot, and I'm over here, and there's a bunch of like, we're we're waiting in line to start playing, and then we finally get to the front of the line, and me, it's like, okay, me versus you. All right, let's go, and we're shooting, we're shooting it, and she's beating my ass and the guys are just looking at me like the guys are just looking around like because there's a bunch of guys in line and they're just looking at it and I'm just like hey bro like it happens okay like <laughs> yeah <laughs> don't go don't go don't, don't like, go cry about they, it they had no clue like that she's a, she's her own athlete like you know what I mean like I'm gonna take some L's and I'm gonna take some L's in ski ball I'm gonna you know air uh, hockey yeah. <laughs> it's no fun when you win all the times and in, in some things besides football <laughs> Um, actually, so I haven't, I haven't asked this question yet. Uh, as far as like the relationship, where are you chasing edges? Like, like, what do you like learning? Like, what do you like, where are you pushing the boundaries or being yeah, curious? Dude, that's a good question, man. That's a, yeah. hey, that's a good yeah. question. <laughs> that's a good question. I'm getting, I'm slowly getting better at the podcast. Dude, dude, the amount that I've grown in a relationship since, since me and her started dating is crazy. Like we've grown so much together and we always, and it's gonna, and now that we know that how much we've grown since we started dating, we just continue, we, we gotta, we continue to know that we're always gonna grow. We gotta always, obviously it's cliche, you gotta communicate, but like, you gotta be open for that kind of growth with your partner. Like, you gotta be like, she's gotta do it. Like, she's gotta have her own separate life than, than my, than me. You know, obviously our lives are together and we're, you know, we're one, we're moving as one in, in a way, but, she's got to do whatever she's got to do to make herself tick because like 
if that's not happening, then it's causing friction in our relationship. You know what I mean? And it's like, it's a beautiful thing when she's doing her own thing and she has, you know, something to hang her hat on and she's chasing her dreams and she's working out when she wants to work out and her schedule doesn't revolve around mine. And, and mine doesn't either, you know, I'm doing my own thing. And I feel like the next level would be like, if we have children, like for them to, for them to see that growth, you know, for them growing up, I feel like the most valuable thing you could probably teach your kid is like, that individual self, you know, that we're, we're obviously yeah, in a relationship, yeah. but we have our own things going on. Like for them to, for our kids to see that would probably be pretty important, I would assume. Yeah, no doubt, dude. That, that's, and that's powerful. And like, and like hidden in what you just said too, is like a, it's a really cool perspective. Like I was just thinking on it where like, so basically like you, you guys kind of take care of your, like yourselves. So like you have like two, well, 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 for lack of a better term, happy people, like bringing that to the table you're not like sacrificing things to make her like there's not like that tear where you end up with two unhappy people because you're trying to make them happy like you're taking care of home base first no no doubt and if she's saying hey like i need you right now and it and it and it's permitting for me to be like i got you like that happens all day like that's all day i if i say i need you and she's like i got you like and it's not affecting her no, no, no matter what like that's cool but like during season if i'm you know if we're making a run and you know i'm i'm in the heart of the season it's it's you know we've we won three games in a row whatever you know i'm going on the fourth and she's like hey i gotta i gotta go handle my my stuff i gotta do whatever i gotta do like for me to be like dang i want you to stay here with me selfishly you know even though i do it, it would be doing a disservice to our relationship because i'm like dang like she gave me these great three weeks you know what i mean we won, we won three straight like she's got to do what she's got to do to make herself happy. So when she comes back two weeks later from now, I get her best self. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that, that's where, and that's what I'm excited about. You know what I mean? And, it's, and that's, and that's kind of like how our, our relationship's been. So it's, you know, our, our jobs are very, very, very different, but uh, you know, we make it work for sure. Dude, that's phenomenal. We, we, I, won't, I won't keep picking that. That's awesome though, dude. But dude, that's it. That's, that's a wrap. Uh, all right. hey, that was good. That was good talk. See, dude, we, we, we covered we covered all the bases. We covered training. We covered football. We covered relationships, art, the the whole nine yards. Man, we're good. So, dude, I, I appreciate you hopping on. Oh, no doubt, man. Uh, shout out to everybody. Hope everyone's doing well. Stay blessed. Huh. Keep everybody good. Yeah, there's some. I'll stop the recording. Oh.